Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Highway Academy. Um, this is the trumpet that you produce in the interchange design course in terms of the detail and everything and all that. So today we are going to be looking at the new features in Civil 3D 2022.1. One. one of the changes they have made, a major huge change, is in terms of targeting of corridor properties. Okay, so we are going to be looking at the new features in Civil 3D 2022.1. Okay, so let's say you have a corridor on an assembly and you click uh, corridor properties. When you click corridor properties, everything remains the same in terms of the old layout and interface. Okay, but earlier on, we have something called targeting the way we used to target. Now, this has changed. Okay, so if this is pretty much standard, if you're selecting uh, the different ramps and how they have been modeled for example we have this ramp and it has been modeled in such a way that it's targeting a feature line okay so now what they've changed is how we target so when you click the target tab they've changed how this is laid out okay so there are a number of things one there's a full new window for the target tab and if you remember those days it was quite a nightmare to really target a number of things so you have, first of all, the corridor name is there. You have the baseline and the baseline end. Then you have a number of columns here. You have a sub-assembly column. You have a baseline, a region, a start and end station. Then you have uh, the assembly. You have the side with the left or right. And then you have a target, okay? You have an offset, then you have an elevation target. The, one of the changes is you can search the assemblies to see the assemblies that you have. Uh, so I have a verge, I have a left and right shoulder, and then I have a different lens. Then I have a bench target, okay? So then in the next column, you have the baseline. So this, you can search a number of things in terms of the baseline that you're using. For this case, if you have a number of alignments, it can show you and you can filter based on that. Again, you can filter based on region. So yeah, we have a start and end chainage, okay? We also have the type of assemblies. It can show you the types of assemblies that you have used in this case. So for example, in this case, because it's a ramp, I've used the ramp assembly, okay? Then the side with the left or right, okay? So the other cool thing they've done is that when we used to target, for example, let's go with the lane and you wanted to target um, the elevation and let's say the width. Now, if you wanted to target the width, um, what happens here is the number of things. One, you have, on the left hand side you have the alignment target and you have the feature lines if you remember these two were joined together you had to either first select on the top table whether you want to target an alignment or a feature line but right now the beauty of this is you can select both of them at the same time so i can quickly look through here and i can easily see what do i want to target so, and i just have to tick it so i'm like okay i want to target that ramp and then on the other side i want to make sure i target maybe let's say feature line and you can indicate the different uh, changes where you want this to be so for this case maybe i want to target a ramp a or a ramp b or something along those lines you can select it okay so then the other thing they've done is there's something called uh, offset target okay so if select offset target it's going to lead you to this and then after that you have the elevation okay so the elevation, as you've done it, you can always select uh, what you want to select for the elevation. So for this case, uh, let's give an example. I want to select the elevation to target a given feature line. Let's say it's elevation. I can already select it. Okay. I can say to name the feature line. Let's say that. And then I can select it. Now they've separated uh, where we used to do the target surfaces from. So after offset and elevation, Okay, I'm assuming members are aware of this, but it's they've just kind of reorganized the whole interface in terms of how you can select and target. Okay, if if you now want to target the surfaces, you click the surfaces tab and it can ask you, uh, okay, what do you want to target? Which surface do you want to target? And this has changed a bit. Okay, okay. So let's say you now want to look at the surface targeting. So let's say we want to look at the daylight bench. This is a surface you're supposed to be targeting. So we pan all the way to the right and there's somewhere where there's the target. And all you have to do is you can click set all if you want to select set all of them. And then you want to target the ramp D, uh, the ramp D surface, or I want to target the ramp. Let's say I want to target in this case, the ramp A and I'm, I'm selecting the surface I need to target for this example. Okay, so let's say that's the case. And then you can click rebuild corridor. 
So what has happened is they've separated the two, the surface and the offset and elevation tabs. So you have the offset and elevation tabs. And what they've done is they've given you a lot more working space in terms of how you target the different others. You have the different ways in which you can select the different sub assemblies that have been used in this case. Okay, so you can see different shoulders, you can see this. And the beauty with this is you can zoom to the assembly in the corridor. Okay, you can see there I've zoomed to the <laughs> this is okay i've forgotten okay so you can i was choosing the wrong thing so the sub assembly in the corridor so you can look at and say okay i want to zoom to this so you can click zoom to sub assembly and then you can look at the different uh facets so you can see this is the sub assembly made and that's how it looks like so you can make modifications to it so if i want to zoom to the right shoulder i can zoom to it i can say zoom to that and if I want to see it in the plan, I can say zoom to the sub-assembly in the corridor. And what it will do is it will show me where the sub-assembly is. So you can see that's the shoulder. It shows me where the verge is, the right hand verge, and the shoulder, the lanes, it's showing the width of the lanes, um, the outer lane, my slope projection that does everything, and then the bench targeting that I have that targets the bench in that area, okay? So what they've done is they've made it really easy for you to handle the offsets. And this is very good when you're designing uh, some of the most complicated and annoying corridors. So they've done that also for the surface. So if you want, you can copy targets. So for example, if you, if you selected um, a daylight bench and you're like, I want a daylight bench to target, let's say the surface, let's say I want it to target the existing ground in this case. And let me just use a reference expressway EG. So what I can do is I can now just copy targets from here. I can select copy targets and I go here and I, then I paste targets. And the beauty of this is, as you can see, it has already copied um, the ground surface from one to another. So if you have a number of surfaces, you can click copy and then paste targets. Click and copy and paste targets. And then after that, you can then rerun your corridor. So in a nutshell, what they have done is they've separated the offset and elevation on the surface. They've made this very easy for you and very convenient for you to see. And now you're able to work with the surfaces, target them separately. Then you focus now on the offsets and elevations. And they've made this very easy in that all, if your alignments are well labeled, it's very, very good. And now as a bonus, if you have like two monitors, okay, you can always have this window open and then you click something called Oh, Windows 11 sometimes acts up. Okay, it's showing so... Okay, let me just try to... to minimize this because I think it's acting up. Okay, I think these are some of the bugs of Windows. So, okay, so let's say you have two windows. You can click this pin tab and what will happen is this window will always be open. Okay, the beauty with this is the window will always be open as you can see. So when you click here, it disappears. But when you hover over it, I mean, you, you have everything back in, in that case. Whoop, it's a bit buggy. <laughs> uh, okay, it's back. So the beauty with this is once you pin that window, um, you, you always have access to it. So you just have to click away, do everything you're doing. You can do the pans and all that and see. And then you're like, okay, I want to handle this ramp. And then I see how I handle that ramp. And then you can click back our window takes some few minutes to, you have to click left and right, and then everything is back for your service. So Civil 3D 20, 22.1 has made the targeting and uh, targeting surfaces and elevations much easier. Now, one modification was made in the Project Explorer. As you know, they made this very, they brought the Project Explorer on the home tab in 2021. Point and most of the things here have remained quite similar in terms of uh in terms of how they work okay um what they have done is they've added an extra speed they've showed the speed of the different for example let's go to alignments we own alignments and
So let's go to alignment. So when you select the alignment, you can see the design speed. So the design speed has been added to show uh, what we're dealing with in this case, okay? Um, the design speed has been added. That's what they added. And then a number of features in terms of uh, good looking tables. So thank you so much for watching this video. Um, try out Civil 3D 2022.1 in this case. It makes work really, really easy in terms of how you do this. If you want to learn how to design this, check out the interchange design course. I show you how to create this from scratch, from start and all that stuff. And you will have access to this project file. And please do remember that this will be part of the tutorials that are on the Highway Academy website. These are released before like a week or two before on the website. Then they are brought to the YouTube channel. Okay, so thank you so much and have a lovely time.